Hi everyone, my name is Jing Liu. I'm a fifth year uh, at SIPA. Uh, so I was literally notified this morning to give a presentation today. <laughs> what I did is I went back home and changed my shirt <laughs> and wrap up this slide within half an hour. So please bear with me if I go blank in the middle of the presentation. So, but I'm still very excited to share with you about this work, peer effects in college online courses. So this, grow, this work grows out of a collaboration between SIPA and a very large for-profit university. Um, actually, this paper was already published a year ago. It's called Connect Connections Matter, How Interactive Peers Affect Students in Online College Courses, and it's joint work with Eric Ballinger and Sunan Loeb. So why do we care about peer effects? We know that peers often influence uh, student, uh, people's decisions and also productivities, especially when uh, the production is collaborative. This is especially true for higher education because uh, student learning is produced jointly by both uh, students, peers, and professors. I do think there's, there are a lot of peer effects going on at SIPA, although we are now randomly assigned to CPAS, so we cannot evaluate the effectiveness of CPAS program, but I do think there are a lot of peer effects going on here. So there is a growing literature of uh, focus on how peer effects, um, how peers uh, affect student performance, friendship, uh, well, uh, which fraternity they choose, and their attitudes for college students. This kind of study often um, is in the context of dorms. So you have this uh, peers in your dorm and how they affect your outcome. And to date, very little research studies that show us what are the me mechanisms of peer effects. Basically, what we know is that we know that a peer who uh, has previously have high GPA can make me a more productive in my study, but we don't know what they do that make me productive. So this research is gonna show you uh, this kind of mechanisms of peer effects. Uh, peers can work through multiple mechanisms. Here I'm gonna go give you two examples. First, it can be group work. So we work together and we uh, inspire each other's idea and we give each other really good feedback. That way, peers can matter. Another mechanism can be engagement. So because I talk with you, uh, I really enjoy talking with you, so I'm more likely to stay in the classroom and participate in the discussion, then I benefit from this kind of engagement. However, it is very hard to measure uh, the mechanisms of peer effects because we rarely observe peers in action. And uh, because of the booming of college online courses, this kind of associated data actually allow us the first time to examine this kind of questions, which we want to answer, but we could not answer before. Um, but two caveats here. So how peers affect students might be really different in an online learning setting compared with an in-person setting. So this result may, might not be generalizable to all the learning settings. Um, Second is not all online courses uh, actually have this kind of feature of peer interaction. For example, in Florida, students in the K-12 system are, uh, are, required, are required to take online courses, but these courses do not entail this kind of feature of interaction. I'm gonna talk more about the context of this study later. So um, the context of this study is very different from MOOCs. Whenever we talk about online courses, we think about MOOCs, but these are very different. So this kind of college online courses try to mimic the real in-person college con courses by uh, having all the, the same syllabi, the same materials, 25 students a classroom, a professor is there, and similar class size, and uh, all those features are very similar to uh, ordinary in-person college courses. And the, this, course, this kind of courses are very popular, especially in the for-profit world, because it promised a redu the re reduction of cost and easier access for students, because oftentimes, these kind of courses are asyn asynchronous, so people can log in their online forum whenever they want, whenever they have time to learn. Uh, Thus, it's pretty popular. But research generally shows that uh, compared with in-person classes, online courses are less effective. And there was a very nice paper by Eric and I think Lindsay is also here, the co-author of this paper, um, coming out last year in uh, the, uh, the American Economics Review, showing that compared with in-person classes, online courses, are, students who take online courses perform worse in those online courses. Uh, 
so let's talk about peer effects in those virtual courses. Uh, as I said before, peers can work through multiple um, mechanisms. Here I'm classifying those mechanisms into two broad categories. First, peer can, peers can work through these actions. So how long they post and how frequent they post. This kind of very simple actions can actually influence certain uh, outcomes. Another dimension can be peer interactions. So students can interact in terms of uh, the, the content of the course. So they can answer these questions, interact, uh, and inspire each other, uh, and ask questions to each other based on those course content. Another dimension is interpersonal. So what I mean by interpersonal here is how whether peers uh, reach out to their classmates to actually engage them. And I, uh, this is basically only emphasizing the social dimension of peer interaction. So this paper is only focused on this very narrow dimension of peer interaction, the social dimension of peer, peer effects. But we have other work going on to examine all those other aspects of peer, peer effects in, co in college online courses. So there are two research questions in this paper we want to answer. The first one is a very descriptive, descriptive research, research question in nature. So how do interpersonal interactions uh, in college online courses differ across students based on their background characteristics? Um, we, do, we do not have a very good background characteristics, but we do have like gender uh, and whether you are pursuing a, uh, BA and your age, but we find that students vary systematically, systematically in their interpersonal interaction based on this kind of background characteristics. And the second question is a causal question. How do peers' interpersonal, interper, interpersonal interactions affect students' course performance, uh, especially for those who are on the margin of dropping out? So we, are, we, we care about those students who are on the margin because those students, uh, they are it's very hard for them to engage in these college online courses, and they are at risk of dropping out. So we um, focus specifically on those group of students. And we find that more peer engagement practices actually improves both student short-term and medium-term uh, student outcomes, including their grade, their points earned, and whether they enroll in the next semester. This is especially true for students who are on the margin, who are at the risk of dropping out. So a little bit of the data. Uh, at the point of uh, doing, working on this paper, we had data from two online courses delivered in 2010 from a large for-profit university. I'm, I'm not allowed to name this institution anymore. But we have these two. <laughs> we were allowed before, but now, no. Uh, <laughs> so we had these two courses, Cal 148 and Psychology 110. Cal 148 was uh, uh, the first class that students need to take. Uh, when they enter this college. So it's a very massive class, and everybody needs to enroll. And everybody, because it's the first class people, people took, everybody was very engaged and talk a lot. So this makes this course a less uh, ideal setting for uh, this research question, because students are already very enga engaged, very interactive. So Psychology 110 is a more typical um, college online courses. So students are not that motivated. They respond sometimes, but not always. This makes this Psychology 110 a better setting to study, this question, uh, to study uh, these questions. So we focus on Psychology 110 in this paper. So how the class is organized. Um, they have very specific features. For example, students are assigned to those class sections based on their registration order, so the timing of the their registration, which allows us to overcome selection bias in this setting. Secondly, students meet in a password-protected website, so nobody, nobody else can um, enter into this forum and talk with people. It's a closed forum that for people to discuss. And section professors, they lead the lecture by posting the first question and motivate students to talk around this topic. And lastly, students must comment each thread Three, more than three times each week to earn their grades. So this kind of online discussion is actually a required element for this kind of courses. And the data we have is a full transcripts of all the online written communications by students. So in total, it's more than two million posts. It's enormous, a lot of data to work on. 
Uh, this is a picture of the real, um, is a snapshot of the online discussion forum from one course. So you can see that there is a clear tree structure. Uh, a professor, Professor X, posts this civic virtue topic, and then students respond to this, uh, this mother post. Uh, and student can, professor can respond to certain students' response, and then students can continue this kind of conversation. And at the point we work with this data, we actually didn't have the, uh, the data on this tree structure. We only have the content of each post. So this creates a problem of how we identify peer interaction, although later on we receive more data and it's more complete, and we ultimately have all those tree structures. So we are working on a new paper uh, using this kind of data now. So a little bit about the descriptive statistics from Psychology 110. You can see that on average, about 80% of people pass this course, and there's a lot of variation of course grade, um, and about 82% of them enrolled uh, after this class in the next semester. About 10, 10 credits they um, earn, they enrolled in the next semester. Because this is for profit university, so the demographics of the students are, is pretty different from uh, general college students. You can see that um, they are generally older, about 30, 31 years old. Uh, geographically, they are pretty uh, dispersed all over the place from uh, in the US. Some of them also from outside of the US. Uh, what I want to say here. So the three major, uh, three main majors in this university is business management, technology, and health. Uh, here are some descriptive st statistics of uh, the post characteristics. Uh, so we can see that uh, on average, every student posts about 42 postings uh, in the whole semester. Uh, here are some word counts, but all of them have pretty big variation there. Because we want to measure this kind of peer interaction, it's pretty challenging. It's kind of not some, some data we, we worked before uh, because it's unstructured. We need to dig into the content of the peer interaction, the posting data from this on college online courses. So we uh, decompose this type of po uh, this po posts into three types. We randomly, uh, so we randomly take 300 of posts from this more than 2 million posts and read them literally. So we actually uh, discover three types of posts. The first type of post is they directly name uh, a peer. For example, I ag agreeing with peer A here is uh, anonymized. I will have to go with theory number one, the restoration sleep, like she said, the body, like blah, blah, blah. But here, clearly, there is a peer's name embedded in the text. And it shows that a student is actually interacting with this peer. And this, this student actually read this peer's um, comments before. So very clear interaction here. And the second type is interaction without directly um, naming the student's name. So like here, how? Well, I think you are talking about how one relaxes themselves and tries to fall asleep, something like that. Here is a you, but there's no peer's name in it. But it's still some kind of clear evidence of peer interaction. And the third type, there's no interaction at all. If you, can, if you read this paragraph, there's no evidence of peer interaction. It's purely a discussion of the content. We, are not, we have no idea about whether this student is in, interacting with the peer or not. So we take a random sample of these 300 posts and classify them into these three types. Actually the majority of them don't have this kind of interaction, 85% of them, no evidence of interaction. And 11% of them fall into the first type. So there's a nomination of a peer, uh, there's clear evidence of interaction. And type two uh, falls, uh, there are about 4% of this, uh, like you, you, say, you said you or something like that, but there's no nomination of peer's name, but it's still some kind of peer interaction. Because the large majority of interaction posts mention names, so we use this name mentioning to identify posts with interpersonal interaction. So I wrote a Python program to extract all those names uh, and create a measure on peer interaction. So later on, we received data from this university again. And actually, it has uh, this new data has information on uh, the tree structure. We can validate the previous measure with this new data, and we find that actually when a person is naming this peer, with 
is naming peers, 92%, 93% of the time, they are responding to a peer. That means when you nominate a peer, you are actually interacting with a peer. So that basically suggests this measure is pretty valid. To identify the peer effects here, there are three challenges. First one, very obvious, student sorting, because we have this knowledge about the mechanism of student assignment, so we can actually overcome this selection bias by controlling the order of reg registration. And the second uh, thread is common variable bias. Um, but in this, in, in this uh, scenario, the only difference uh, among those classrooms is the teacher. So teachers can be different, and thus uh, we control for professor fixed effects to overcome this challenge. And the last one is probably the most challenging one. Uh, it's called reflection problem, the simultaneity of students' interaction. And we, because we have those nice longitudinal data about the post, we are able to uh, create measures of student abil innate ability by using the sequential nature of the posting. So it's a, a little bit involved. I won't go into detail about that. Well, the first question, because I don't have time, I want to be quick. Um, so basically, we find that females are more likely to nominate peers, and older, older students are more likely to nominate peers. This is basically the same thing when we look at who are nominated. That means here, female dot is not significant, but for older people, they are more likely to be nominated by their peers. That means we have some evidence that their uh, students are differentially uh, involved in this kind of interaction. So the second question I want to focus on is how do peer inter interpersonal interaction affect student course performance? Here we have four measures, whether they pass the course, the course points, and the enrollment of, uh, in the following quarter. And then we model this outcome as a uh, as something, uh, so here is uh, peer interaction, here is students' own characteristics, and because it is vulnerable from the, selection, the reflection issue, we use students' time invariant abilities and preferences estimated using the dynamic panel model methods to instrument them. And we control for the, uh, the registration order and the professor fixed effects to get that. Okay, so uh, we didn't find anything using this specification, but we find some, some heterogeneous effects. So we predict whether a student is nominated by using their gender, age, and major, and we can see this distribution. That means students have different probabilities of being nominated, or they have different uh, probabilities of being engaged in this kind of online courses. And we find that as a student's pro predicted probability of being nominated going down, they benefit less from uh, interactive peers. In other words, students who are at this range, so be, uh, who have a probability of being nominated smaller than 0.6, the, we observe, we, we find, found a, a pretty significant positive effects from interactive peers. This is the same thing for grade points, enrollment in next semester, and enrolled credits in next semester. Okay, I'm running out of time. I'm wrapping up. So we find that peers definitely matter, not only because of who they are, but because of what they do. And this kind of data allow us to answer this question that we want to answer before, but we could not. And this paper provides some of the first evidence on productive interventions to engage students online. So we need to think of ways to motivate those kind of peer interaction so that students can uh, persist longer and learn better. This kind of availability of this detailed data on interaction allow for this understanding. And we have this ongoing work. Uh, this is a running title. Uh, we are able to look at multi-dimensional peer effects using uh, newer data from this institution. Okay, I'm gonna wrap here. Thank you.